Hello and welcome to video 3 of the trigonometry video series. In this video we are learning how to find sides. Finding a side using trigonometry. Step 1 we'll label the sides, hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent. We'll then decide sine, cos or tan, whether it's a sine, cos or tan question based on the arrangement of sides that we have in that particular question. Then we'll write the trigonometry statement out, the trig equation out, for either sine, cos or tan when we decide. And then we'll make a move to get the letter on its own. And then we'll use the calculator to round off our question. There are our steps. Let's have a look at our first example. Here's a triangle. We're asked to find the length of x correct to one decimal place. And here's our triangle. Our steps we're going to follow. We're going to label the sides hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent. Now the hypotenuse is the longest side, so that's our 5.2. The opposite side of the 69 degrees, uh, the opposite side of the triangle is an x, and so we'll label that one the opposite side. And the one we haven't used yet is just the adjacent side. So label them in that order, hypotenuse first, then opposite, and the one left will have to be the adjacent. Now we're going to have to decide whether this is a sine, cos or tan question. If we notice, we have uh, two sides that are involved here in the question. We have an x on the opposite side and we have a 5.2 on the hypotenuse. So this, this triangle involves the opposite and the hypotenuse. So we'll want a trig ratio that matches that. We'll want a trig ratio that uses both the opposite and the hypotenuse. So the sine ratio uses the opposite and hypotenuse. So we're going to select that as the basis of the rest of our solution. Okay, so sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. For the next line, we're going to substitute into this arrangement all the numbers from this particular triangle. So sine theta, now this theta is a symbol for an angle, and there's only one angle we have here, and that's 69 degrees, so I'm going to put a 69 degrees in where that theta is, so we've got sine 69 so far. Uh, that equals opposite over hypotenuse. In the opposite position on our triangle, you can see that we have an x, so we'll put the x on top. And on the bottom we're going to put the hypotenuse, and you can see we've been given 5.2 centimetres for that. So we just filled in that uh, sign arrangement with all the numbers from this particular question. Now step four is we, we need to get the letter on its own. So to get the letter on its own here, we need to get rid of or sort of move a 5.2 that is dividing by x. The bottom of a fraction divides into the top. So how do we move a 5.2 that's dividing? We need to do the opposite to both sides, like when we're solving an equation. And so we need to multiply both sides by 5.2. So that'll be handy because that'll get our letter on its own when we kind of consider that the 5.2 that's dividing and the 5.2 that's multiplying on that right hand side will cancel each other out, leaving us with just the letter on its own. So we'll just have the letter on its own, x, we're swapping sides here a little bit, and the x will be over on the left hand side now. And you can see on uh, the left hand side here we have 5.2 multiplying by sine 69 degrees. So we'll write that out. Now, it's really important that we put it in this sort of arrangement. We don't ever want to be multiplying that 5.2 by the 69 degrees because they're talking two different languages. The 5.2 is a length and the 69 degrees is a, is a degree number. So they're not really talking the same units there. So we want to type it into our calculator there. 5.2 times sine 69 and we get x equaling 4.9 centimeters if we round it off to one decimal place. And looking at the triangle, we were expecting a number for x that's slightly smaller than uh, 5.2 because 5.2 is on our hypotenuse, so that's supposed to be the longest side. Okay, so that makes a bit of sense. 4.9 centimeters is our answer there. So we labeled the sides. We chose sine, cos, or tan depending on the two sides that we have in the question for this one and then we got we adjusted but to get the letter on its own and then we used our calculator our second example here has seven meters there they want to want us to find the length of y it's uh, correct to two decimal places this time here are our steps let's label the sides the longest side there is the seven so that's going to be the hypotenuse 
the opposite side of the triangle to the angle we have is over there on the left and so the y there on the base is uh, in the adjacent position okay so this question involves adjacent and hypotenuse we've got a letter on the adjacent and a number on the hypotenuse so that's going to be the basis of us uh, selecting whether to use sine cos or tan there are our three choices can you see one that is this uses the adjacent and hypotenuse side Yep, that middle one uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse. It's the only one that uses both those sides. So we'll choose it for the basis of the rest of our solution. So this will be a cos question. We'll write that up the top there. And then we'll fill in all the numbers from this particular triangle. Can you see what angle we should use instead of theta? Yes, there's only one angle there, 35 degrees. So we'll pop that in. Can you see what's in the adjacent position? Yeah, we have a y there. So y will go on top. And in the hypotenuse position, we have a 7. That m there is just 7 metres, so we'll just put the number 7 there for our calculation. Now, to get the letter on its own, we'll be wanting to move that 7 that's dividing. So we'll do the opposite to both sides. We'll multiply by 7 both sides. So that on that right-hand side, we'll have a divide by 7 and a multiply by 7 that cancel each other out. And uh, that allows us to achieve the letter on its own. So we have y on its own, and on the other side we have 7 times cos 35, which we will just type into our calculator and get our final answer. We'll round that off carefully to two decimal places. 5.73 metres is our length there. And we're expecting it to be just less than 7, so that's, that makes sense. So that time we had the arrangement of sides that allowed us to use the cosine ratio, or the cos ratio. And then we uh, just filled in all the numbers, really. Did a bit of rearranging. Another example. Here we have uh, that arrangement of numbers. So let's go through our steps. Label the sides. Our hypotenuse doesn't have anything on it this time. The opposite side of the triangle from the angle is where the A is. So we'll label that opposite. And the, the one that's left, the adjacent, has a 4.6 on it. We'll be looking to uh, involve in our trig ratio uh, that we choose an opposite and an adjacent. Let's check them all out. Opposite and adjacent, and it's also the one we haven't used so far. <laughs> the tan ratio looks like it uses the opposite and adjacent, so we'll choose it for our question. Let's write that up the top in the middle there. All right, let's fill in all the numbers from the triangle. I hope you're getting the hang of this. What's the angle? Instead of tan theta, we're going to put tan 41. What's in the opposite position? That's our little a. What's in the adjacent position? 4.6. Uh, how do we move a 4.6 that's dividing? Well, once again, we'll multiply both sides by that bottom number, allowing us to cancel out on that right-hand side, leaving the letter on its own. So we're doing very similar things here. We're just choosing different sine, cos, or tan ratios to base the question on. Most of the calculations here are the same each time. So we've got the letter on its own, and we have on the other side there 4.6, times 1041. We use our calculator at that point and round it off 4.0 centimeters. And that's roughly the same as the other side there, so that makes a bit of sense. It doesn't have to be bigger than the 4.6, but around that number would give us a bit of confidence that we've done the right thing. So we just follow those steps each time. Sometimes we'll choose to base the question on sine, cos, or tan, depending on the arrangement of sides. But most of the calculations there are the same steps each time. Now here's a bit of a variation. Let's see how this one pans out. We're going to do something slightly different here. Okay, let's label the sides. Hypotenuse is the longest one. We've got across the other side, on the opposite side of the triangle from the angle there, we have an opposite side and an adjacent side. Let's choose sine, cos, or tan. This one involves adjacent. We have a number there and hypotenuse, and we have a letter there. So let's see which ratio works with the adjacent and a hypotenuse well. Okay, the cos one is the one we're going to choose because it involves both the uh, adjacent and the hypotenuse. Now something interesting happens here when we fill in the numbers. You watch. Uh, we have the degrees there, and I know that uh, this one's slightly different because we have another 10 in there, and that's uh, we, we read that as 23 degrees, 10 minutes. Each of those degrees is broken up into 60 different parts, and there's 10 of those parts uh, involved in that angle. We'll talk about how we put that into the calculator in a second. Let's fill in the rest here. Now, 
cos theta equals adjacent on top. Now this time on top we'll have a number. Usually we're up to this point we've got a letter on top. And the hypotenuse this time has the letter. So we'll put the x on the bottom. Now this is the first time we've seen one where the x is on the bottom. So I'm, I'm here to tell you there's a little shortcut we need. What we do is we take those two bits to get the letter on its own here. It's, uh, we do a little shortcut. We swap the x and the cos 23 degrees 10 minutes, we swap that around. It's a little shortcut mathematically. So that allows us to swap places and we get, see how the x has gone over where the cos was and the cos bit has gone underneath where the x was, so that's swapping places. And then that sets up a divided by thing, the bottom of a fraction divides into the top. So we've got x equals 38 divided by cos 23 degrees 10 minutes. So when we put that into the calculator, you'll have to listen carefully here. We'll do 38. I'd recommend doing the divided by button. And then press cos 23, then the degrees button, then 10, then the degrees button again. That's how you enter it. It's cos 23, degrees button, 10, then the degrees button. Then press equals. And then we get, should get an answer, 41.3 millimeters rounded off to one decimal place. Were we expecting that sort of number? Just to check that we've done the right thing here. It's good if we get a number that we expect. Yeah, okay. One of the sides was 38 millimeters. The other one was 48.3 millimeters. So we're expecting that to be longer. That's the longest side of the triangle. So that, that's kind of what we expect there. Interesting variation that one. When this only kicks in, this variation, when the letter ends up on the bottom. We've got to follow the sine, cos and tan arrangements absolutely precisely. We can't go mucking around with where we put the letter just for fun. <laughs> because the letter was on the hypotenuse, it goes on the bottom. Whenever that happens, we do that swap place, swapping places uh, routine there, and we do 38 divided by whatever's on the bottom. We type it into our calculator, we'll still get our answer quite nicely there. So that's an interesting variation. Anytime you see the letter on the bottom, do that swapping, and then uh, we'll set up a divided by uh, scenario. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, let's run through the uh, recap of finding a side. We'll label the sides carefully. We'll then, from the sides that are involved in that particular question, we'll decide whether we should use sine, cos, or tan. We'll write out that trig equation and sub in all the numbers from that particular triangle. We'll get the letter on its own, usually multiplying both sides to get the letter on its own, but we saw that special variation uh, whereby we swap places and divide uh, to get the letter on its own. We use the calculator and do our rounding off carefully. So that's how we find a side using trigonometry ratios, sine, cos and tan. Hope that helps and, oh sorry, just the special variation I mentioned, swapping places. Okay, video there by Peter Blake. Uh, check out www.peterblake.com peterblakemaths.com, sorry, for more great maths videos. Hope that helps. See you next time for finding some angles.